Good afternoon. Welcome to Family Fellowship of Priest Church. How you doing? I'm Julius Noble, and we're here in uh, church here in Robbins, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. And we're thankful that most importantly, Jesus Christ is here. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you would have your hand upon every one of us, Lord. We ask for your blessing, your guidance, your direction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, also, as you know, we've been reading through the Bible in 2023. Today on, amen, hallelujah. Today's reading through the Bible is Acts chapter 22, verse 30, all the way through chapter 23, verse 22. Again, Acts chapter 22, verse 30, through Acts chapter 23, Verse 22. Amen. That's the reading for today. Amen. Read it and let it be a blessing to you as we look at this, at the journey, as we go through it and learn of what God has to tell us in his word. Amen. Amen. God is good. We're thankful for all that he's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to be looking today. Amen. It's a very special word and we're thankful for that. Today we're going to be coming out of Revelation chapter 11. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11. Thank you. God is good and we're thankful for what he is telling us and teaching us. And what we're going to do today, we're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. Today's message title is Realizing That God Is Right. Realizing That God Is Right. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Amen. Let's get ready. Let's open up. Let's read this word, the sermon text today together. Let's read. Revelation 11, verses 1 and 2. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God the altar, and those who worship there, but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will please have your hand upon this word for us. Minister by your spirit, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, as only you can, we pray. Give us clarity, I pray, and speak into our hearts, we pray today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Realizing that God is right. Realizing that God is right. As we open our text today in Revelation 11, 1, we, we look at and we see that this refers, they refer to an actual temple. This temple here is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The actual temple which will be rebuilt in Jerusalem. That's the temple. We were talking about that in Bible study today a bit. This temple will be rebuilt. And God here tells us that it's going to be rebuilt as, as we speak, as we read here in Revelation. It will be built in Jerusalem. Now understand this. It's going to be built with Israel once again. Look at this. Instituting, that means starting and beginning, to have sacrifices. Again, sacrifices to God. That's what's going to happen. It's, it's very interesting. It's going to happen again. Israel will once again begin holding regular sacrifices in Jerusalem in a temple that will be there where there is not one now, where there was once many years ago. Daniel prophesied of this event 500 years before Jesus was born. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. In Daniel 
Chapter 9, verse 27. That's what was prophesied before. Hallelujah. Look at what it says here. Daniel 9. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Look at what it says here. I want you to hear these words. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you. Daniel 9, verse 27. This is Daniel's prophecy 500 years before Christ was born. And look at what Daniel said. God telegraphed what he was going to do. Verse 27. Then he shall confine. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of the abomination shall be one who makes desolate even unto the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Preacher, what he's talking about, I want you to hear this now. The phrase he shall confirm refers to the Antichrist. The phrase he shall confirm refers to the Antichrist. It is now, there will be an Antichrist. The phrase in the middle of the week refers to three and a half years. He's going to establish a three and a half years here. At which time, the Antichrist will show his true colors and stop the sacrifices. Listen to this. He's going to stop the sacrifices of what are being offered to God. He's going to say, no, it's canceled out. At that time, he will actually invade, listen to this, he will actually invade Israel, which will result in Israel suffering its first defeat since its formation as a nation in 1948. That's when Israel was established as a nation. And it will be the first defeat. They have not been defeated since it was established, but it will be the first defeat ran by the Antichrist. And it's coming. It's coming. Israel will be defeated. Then we go to verse 2. I want to look at that. Verse 2, Revelation 11, the sermon text. But leave out the court which is outside the temple. Revelation 11 verse 2. And do not measure it for it has been given to the Gentiles and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. How long? 42 months? Three and a half years. Of that seven years, three and a half years Years, there's going to be a seven-year tribulation period, but three and a half years, something's going to happen in the middle of it. Watch this. The prophet Daniel prophesied it. The prophet Daniel prophesied it. Where he outlined the successive Gentile nations that would rule throughout the world history from Babylon to the Antichrist. During the great tribulation, as seen in Daniel chapter 2, verse 41, I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31 to verse 45. I'm not going there now, but you can write it down and look at it if you want to. Later on, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31 to 45, it'll have, it'll have it lined up there. Jesus predicted, now Jesus predicted that Jerusalem, their future destruction, and the scattering of the Jewish people during Antichrist persecution of Israel in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 29. It is not happening right now, but it's going to happen in the future. Look at this. The Antichrist will seize Jerusalem to tread the city underfoot for 42 months. 42 months. What's that preaching? Three and a half years. 42 months. Three and a half years. The Antichrist will seize Jerusalem and tread them on the foot for three and a half years. 
42 months, a leader who is really the Antichrist will take over Israel. Learn something about the Antichrist. Hear about the Antichrist. Let me settle down. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These, verse 4, these are the two olive trees and two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. Hear this now. Remember our history. What we've studied before, the two witnesses who will receive power from God are Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah. Two people that were taken from the earth without dying. Remember, Enoch, because he was so good. Elijah, because he followed God and he took him and he was no more. These two men will come back. They will be the two witnesses that were here. And they're going to put on sackcloth and be roaming around telling people about God and their sins. They will be back witnessing for God. The two witnesses will receive power from God will be Enoch and Elijah, two men who did not die but were translated. Enoch was translated to heaven where? Genesis 5. Verse 21 to 24. Look, it's true. It's true. Elijah was translated to heaven without dying in Malachi chapter 4. Verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6, Malachi. We're told that God took Enoch and Elijah to heaven without them dying in the Bible. Enoch and Elijah will be witnesses for three and a half years wearing sackcloth on their bodies. And they're going to be witnessing to the world the sin that's there. And they're going to be telling about, but guess what? They're not going to be well liked. They won't be well liked. We go to verse 5, Roman, Revelation chapter 11, verse 5. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours the enemies. And if anyone wants to kill, to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the, over the waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Hold on now, watch this. I looked at this one. The fire that comes from their mouths will be judgment, not actual fire. They're going to call something down. They're going to call it down on people. And it will be judgment, not fire. These men will be able to stop the rain at their command for three and a half years. They're going to say, no rain. It was done back in, back in the biblical time. But now they're going to call out and say, it will be no rain. And it's going to dry up three and a half years. They will be present, both Enoch and Elijah. A time is coming, but guess what? It ain't going to be over yet, but watch what happens. Guess what? The world is not going to really like everything that they say. Interesting. How it is interesting that the world don't always like you when somebody speaks for God. As we see in verse 7 of Revelation 11, verse 7. Tragedy will come to the servants of God. The witnesses, verse 7, when they finish their testimony, the beast, listen to this, y'all, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. The beast 
We've been talking about the mark of the beast. This is the actual person. He is the devil incarnate. The beast will come out of the abyss. He's a satanic angel. It is the one described by John in Revelation 17, 8. He will be a fallen angel who will be invisible but will greatly help the Antichrist. And with the help of this fallen angel, the Antichrist will kill the two witnesses, Elijah and Enoch. He will kill them. And it's probably going to be televised over the world. But not until that ministry is completed. Verse 8, Revelation 11. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom. Spiritually it's called Sodom. Look at this. But look at the other name. You know it. And Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where was he crucified? Jerusalem. 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 It's going to be in that city. Why did they call it Sodom? Watch this. Look at this. Read my lips. As obvious as it is, Jerusalem, Satan will turn this city into the capital of homosexuality. Sodom. And worldliness, Egypt. Sadly, that's what's going to come to Jerusalem at that time. The dead bodies of Elijah and Enoch will be lying in the streets for days. And they'll probably have it on television. We go to verse number 9. Revelation 11, verse 9. The dead bodies will be celebrated for speaking against their sin. They're going to be celebrating that they're dead, cheering on that these two witnesses are dead that spoke against them. Verse 9, then those, verse 9, Revelation 11, then those from the people's tribes, tongues, and nation will see their dead bodies three and a half days. They're going to be laying on the street dead. Three and a half days. And people are going to be celebrating all over the world. Verse 10. And not let their dead bodies be put into graves. Verse 10. Then those who dwell on the earth we rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. They're going to be celebrating that these two witnesses are dead that have been speaking against their sin worldwide. Did you hear? they dead. they dead. they dead. They can't speak against what we do no more. they dead. Hey, let's have a party. They're dead. They've been put down on us. They're dead. We knew they wasn't no good. We knew they wasn't no good. They're going to celebrate it. They're going to celebrate it. But it's still in there. We we'll go to verse 11, Revelation chapter 11. The world will witness a miracle. Verse 11. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. Elijah and Enoch, God is going to breathe life into their dead bodies, and they're going to stand up, and the world which has been celebrating their death is going to be shocked. It's going to be shocked. Verse 12. And they heard a loud voice from heaven. Let me step down. 
say to them, come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud. And the enemy saw them. Verse 13. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake. And a tenth of the city fell. Talking about Jerusalem. A tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed and the rest were afraid and gave glory to God of heaven. Some will turn to Christ at that point after witnessing the, mir the miracles that happened. Not finished yet. We go to verse 14. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. Going down to verse 16. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of the world, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. That's what he's going to be crying out. Verse 16. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God. We, they're reflecting back. They're looking in heaven now. What, what's happening up there? The elders are worshiping God because they're giving glory to God. They're giving glory to God. And the, the elders are worshiping before God. And they fell on their faces and worshiped before God. We go to verse 17. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 11, verse 17. And they were saying, we give, we give you thanks, O Lord God, Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned. The, the nations were, were angry and your wrath has come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should regard, you should reward your servants and prophets and the saints and those who fear your name small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth there will be a great battle coming it's clear that great battle that's going to be coming will be called Armageddon it's going to happen right there Jesus is going to come back and deal with some stuff this will happen at Christ's second his second coming. As I prepare to close, we go to verse 19. Revelation 11. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven. And the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings Noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. How wonderful to realize that God was right all the time. Many will realize it after death. Others will realize it in hell. Have you come to the point and place Will you realize it that you're willing to say that God is right? Acknowledge God while you have time. Acknowledge God before it's too late. Time is short. Time is short. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Dear God, we come before you right now. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord. Your word at times shakes us, Lord, to our core. Sometimes we may not even want to believe, but Lord, your word is true. Father, I pray that you will speak by your spirit, Lord, to every person, Lord, that's here listening, Lord, and also listening, Lord, as, as they view, Lord, Lord the, this, this video, I pray. I pray, Lord, that you minister by your spirit, Lord. Father, I pray that you will speak. Father, help us, Lord, to, to call out to you. Help us to lean toward you, Lord. You need to talk to him. You need to say, I'm sorry, Lord, for the wrong that I've done. Touch my life. Help me to follow you. Help me. I want to make you the leader of my life. Help me, Lord, to, to do the right thing. Help me, Lord, to, to step as you want me to step. Help me, Lord, to be the man you want me to be or help me to be the person that you desire for me, me to be, Lord. Speak to me, I pray. Minister by your spirit, there's nothing impossible for you, Lord. We thank you, we praise you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that we can realize, Lord, that you are right. Help us to realize that and help us to, to live out that truth, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Take care, we'll see you next week.